evening and welcome to evening prayer for Thanksgiving Day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense. The lifting up of my hands is the evening sacrifice. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ, we have come to the setting of the sun, and we look to the evening light. We sing to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High. Herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for the evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our constant companion on the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope among us, that we may recognize you as you are revealed in the scriptures and in the breaking of the bread. Grant this for your name's sake. Amen. We give thanks to you, O God. We give thanks, for your name is near. We recount your wondrous deeds. At the set time that I appoint, I will judge with equity. When the earth totters and all its inhabitants, it is I who keep steady its pillars. I say to the boastful, do not boast, and to the wicked, do not lift up your horn. Do not lift up your horn on high, or speak with a haughty neck. For not from the east or from the west, and not from the wilderness comes lifting up. But it is God who executes judgment, putting down one and lifting up another. For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup with foaming wine, well mixed, and he pours out from it. And all the wicked of the earth shall drain it down to the dregs. But I will declare it forever. I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. All the horns of the wicked I will cut off, but the horns of the righteous shall be lifted up. Our New Testament reading tonight is from Revelation chapter 22. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, through the middle of the street of the city, also on either side of the river, the tree of life with its twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be anything accursed, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. And night will be no more. They will need no lamp of light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. And he said to me, These words are trustworthy and true. And the Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, has sent his angel to show his servants what must soon take place. And behold, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I heard and saw them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who showed them to me. But he said to me, You must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers, the prophets, and with those who keep the words of this book. Worship God. And he said to me, Do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is near. But the evildoer still do evil, and the filthy still be filthy, and the righteous still do right, and the holy still be holy. Behold, I am coming soon, bringing my recompense with me, to repay everyone for what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, so that they may have the right to the tree of life, and that they may enter the city by the gates. Outside are the dogs and the sorcerers and the sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you about these things for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let the one who hears say, Come, and let the one who is thirsty come, let the one who desires take the water of life without price. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book, and if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all. Amen.
first devotion with Luther this evening is from Hebrews 11.11. 11. Faith enabled Abraham to become a father, even though he was old and Sarah had never been able to have children. Abraham trusted that God would keep his promise. Physical and Spiritual Blessings The Bible clearly shows that promises of physical blessings also include spiritual blessings. We weren't created for an existence like that of cattle and donkeys. Instead, we were created for eternity. When God gives us a promise, he doesn't limit himself to our physical needs. He isn't concerned only about our stomachs. He also wants to keep our souls from being destroyed and wants to give us eternal life. Consequently, promises concerning eternal and physical matters are like the shell of a nut. But the real essence, or inner kernel, is Christ and eternal life. God, who makes the promises, isn't speaking to donkeys and cattle, as Paul points out. God's concern isn't for oxen, 1 Corinthians 9.9. 9. Rather, he's concerned about intelligent human beings created in his image to live with him for eternity. Clearly, the promises of physical blessings are like the nuts and apples we use to get to the attention of our children. God gets our attention with physical blessings so that we will learn to appreciate the eternal blessings. This is how God encourages us to expect eternal life. God's purpose in giving us food and water isn't merely that we would eat and drink without thinking as horses and donkeys do. Rather, he gives us physical blessings so that we will realize that he is loving and kind. This will help us to believe he will take care of all our needs. Even if God only gave you a piece of straw, he would want you to acknowledge him as the eternal God whose kindness is overflowing. If you still believe in him, you will have eternal life. Even though Abraham, Abraham didn't see all of these promises fulfilled in his own lifetime, he still believed God. That's why he was given eternal life. We join together in the Apostles' Creed and the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, true King of heaven and earth, you promised to your church that the gates of hell would not prevail against her, and you still cause your word to be preached and your holy sacraments to be administered among us. But ah, O Lord, the sins of your people obscure the majesty of your bride. Your holy vineyard is trampled and your blessed sacrifice stands neglected. Many think themselves strong and despise the life-giving food that you have ordained for your people, for the forgiveness of their sins. Pardon all our arrogance, and do not come to us in wrath to remove the lamp of your word from before our eyes. O Lord, we pray you, visit this vine which you once established for yourself, and renew us with the sun of your mercy and the water of eternal life. Give us a great hunger for the food of your true body and blood, and let all your faithful people ever be found in the Apostles' doctrine, in the fellowship, in the breaking of your bread, and in the prayers. We implore you, O Lord, for our altar, that it may ever be a place where the medicine of eternal life, the forgiveness of our sins, strengthens us in body and soul, that disbelief and impenitence may stay far from all who come there, so that they may not eat and drink to their own judgment. O eternal High Priest, let the fruit of your Spirit grow in us, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, and chastity. Cause us to live in holy conduct toward one another to the glory of your holy name here in time, and hereafter in eternity, where you live and reign with the Father and the same Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Lord Jesus Christ, Alpha and Omega, bright morning star. You are the tree of life standing on each side of the river of the water of life, bringing healing to the nations. Prepare us for your coming through the healing medicine of your word and sacraments, putting to flight the diseases of our souls, that with willing hearts we may ever love and serve you. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. short reading with Luther tonight is based on Luke 5.31. Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Our help in time of need. The physician is helpful and welcome to the sick, but the healthy pay no attention to him. This woman perceived her need, and for that reason she ran after the sweet fragrance. Song of Solomon 1.3.4.11. So also Moses must come first and teach us to perceive our sins so that grace may become sweet and welcome. Therefore, all is lost, no matter how kindly and delightfully Christ is portrayed, if one is not first humbled by knowledge of himself and is not eager for Christ, as the Magnificat says. He fills the hungry with good things, and the rich he sends away empty. Luke 1, 53. All of this is said and written for the comfort of the miserable, poor, needy, sinful, and despised people so that in all of their need they know to whom they should flee for comfort and help. How it hurts nature and reason when, in destitution, she takes off and leaves behind everything that she senses and clings to the bare word alone, even when she senses the opposite. May God help us in time of need and of death to such courage and faith. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Have a blessed night.